Hello once again, beautiful people. So uh, we went to a big comic convention today. Tons, tons, tons of boxes. Uh, dug through just about like all of them. Uh, for, took a long time. Wore my most comfortable shoes, but <clears throat> my feet still hurt. <clears throat> pretty, pretty tiring, pretty exhausting, but we got like a long box of stuff, plus more. So you know how we do. Uh, let's go through this all. We'll stop once in a while to showcase the writing and art. Uh, another haul. Let's go. So first vendor I got checked out like through the door was, uh, I, I don't know his name, but he's always a nice guy. He, he said he was happy to see me, call me the Road Warrior, I think because uh, maybe I look like punk and <laughs> like old p punk rock fan. And um, <clears throat> I think I, I tend to like make it to far things. He knows me that I'll like show up even if it's like a different end of town or whatnot. Um, so he's always nice to me, makes a nice deal. Uh, I'll catch his name next time, but... This is from his dollar bin, Aliens vs. Predator number zero. Mike Mignola cover. Um, this art's very good too. So this is a prelude to the first Aliens vs. Predator comic. It's number zero. Um, this one here is like, they're talking in kind of corporate, like, politics speak. Meanwhile, it's narrating over some predators kind of fighting for power, fighting for leadership. Testing each other in combat. Pretty good stuff. Uh, this is from a three for five dollar bin. Barbarella number one. <clears throat> I've got a bunch of these already. They kind of seem like they're for chicks, but... Is this maybe art germ? Number three? Or, sorry, number two. The art inside is, like, pretty awesome. Let's uh, check some out randomly here. This is number four. <clears throat> is this the same artist from before? On the first ones, they're like really intricate. Not too shabby. We'll see though, these are <clears throat> easy to get value for if they don't seem to be like something worth keeping and stuff. Uh, number five, more three for five, Transformers Spotlight on Blur. I was just like, I've never really read modern Transformers comics, so I thought, let's check some out. Transformers Last Bot Standing, number one, cover B. Daniel Warren Johnson, Transformers, uh, number one. Star Scream cover. Um, hear a lot of good things about this. I think this is like hyped up right now, so let's see how good it is. Yeah. Red Sonia number three, Merca Andolfo. We'll see about this. <laughs> At least the art should be interesting. There's a lot of trashy Red Sonia out there, though. It's kind of like a needle in a haystack to find good Red Sonia, it seems. Sonia Versal number five. Not familiar with this either, but. Um, Nice enough cover. Maybe Jay Lee or something? Maybe not. Um, these sets were half price, so Batman, Hellboy, Starman, number one and two for 350. James Robinson, Mike Mignola. Never read this, but we'll see. A little bit on like a Mike Grell kick lately, so trying, um, what's it called? Shaman's Tears here. Number 1 to 12, but missing number 5. For 5 bucks, not too bad. <clears throat> oh, that's pretty thick. Unknown Soldier. Number 1 to 4 for 5 bucks. Continuing. Uh, to the next vendor now, he has some sets for sale and another bargain bin. This is a, a set of Green Arrow, the Longbow Hunters. I have one already, but I figure maybe I'll have one to, like just for sale too. Uh, 5 bucks, but it's kind of just good to have. The second one, why not? Um, I'll revisit it too. I remember thinking it was pretty good. I'm not sure if it's great. There's it, maybe there's some problems with it, but uh, um, yeah, it was pretty good though. There are some GI Joes that uh, are kind of like said to be um, good story arcs. So got those 73, 74, <clears throat> 75. 
76, 77, 78. Um, Marvel team up with Spider-Man and the Uncanny X-Men. I thought this was like, I mean, I'm sure it's a Barry Windsor Smith cover, right? It looks very much like it is. So I was like, yeah, let's see what that's about. Bargain bin price, so whatever. And it came, came with this. Also, um, Marvel Team Up Annual, number four. Eh, we'll see. What if, volume one, number 22, what if Doctor Doom had become a hero? Sure, you got Mephisto too. Oh, Wolverine, number five. Actually, <laughs> my cat just put his head where I was putting the comics, so I bonked it on the head with a comic book box. Wolverine number six. <clears throat> An extra copy of Life, Death. Um, X-Men number 186. Barry Winston Smith again. Life, Death part two. X-Men number 198. X-Men annual number five. X-Men annual number eight. No ideas what these are. X-Men Annual number 12, again, Arth Arthur Adams, X-Babies. Continuing. Next vendor was Peg City Comics. They get a bunch of variants, like, specially made. I think they order, like, a thousand copies so that they can get exclusives. But they also had some, like, bargain bin stuff. Uh, Beat-up copy of Daredevil number 179. Some Frank Miller. G.I. Joe number 10. Um, yeah, finding these at bargain print prices is pretty pretty wi wicked, pretty sweet, because, uh, I don't know if you can really find low number G.I. Joe that much for cheap. Number 17, Rabbit Animal Comics, number 2. I saw this, like, looks like underground indie. These animals, like, sniffing glue, huffing paint, <laughs> paint thinner or something, so, might be funny. Um, this is, like, Gun Honey Blood for Blood, number 1. Uh, Peg City Comics exclusive variant, the Virgin variant. So this is one of those that they had there. Um, it has these ticks on it. They have a bin with these where, like, they're not in, like... Sorry, the focus here. Let's see if we can fix the focus. There's, like, just a little dent right there. So it's five bucks instead of uh, <clears throat> costing, like, full price or whatever. Okay, the next vendor, this guy, he sells all his stuff, like their trade paperbacks and hardcovers and stuff. Uh, worth checking out. He seems to be at, like, every kind of second um, Comic-Con, maybe. Uh, so he sells them half half off the U.S. price. So this is a Tim Truman and Joe R. Lansdale Conan. So I'll definitely check that out. Been on a Tim Truman kick a lot lately. And... Uh, these guys teaming up on the world of Conan should be interesting. How bad could it be? I'm sure it's like rather good, at least. Yeah, looking forward to this. <clears throat> uh, Kieran Gillen, uh, McKelvey Wilson. And Cowls, The Wicked and the Divine. Uh, yeah, I think this is like $7 or something, so I'll check it out. Uh, kind of giving a different Kieran Gillen stuff a try. Uh, likewise, Immortal X-Men, Volume 1, another Kieran Gillen, so we'll try that out. This was cool that he had there. I was like, which artisan editions of stuff do you have? And he just pulled this out like while he was digging through stuff. And I was like, yeah, um, I really like that like late 80s to early mid 90s concept art for <clears throat> this kind of thing especially blizzard uh when in the era of like diablo 1 or warcraft 2 um let's open this up <laughs> maybe this is too hard to do on camera i want to make sure i don't damage it Because I've I seen, like, Chris Metzen 
that was the dude, man, for concept art from like Diablo 1 and Warcraft 1 and 2. So, oh yeah, I was like, how much is that? And he's like, well, how much do you want to pay? I was like, oh, I don't know. And he's like, how about 10 bucks? I was like, hell yeah, dude. Um, almost open. Hear that new, that new book noise for opening the pages. I really hope it's a lot of like Diablo 1 stuff. Me and my friends were like little shitlords back in that game. Back before the concept of troll was a, like a, a term, we were trolls back on those like some of the first online chats ever. Try to make people cry and <laughs> get super angry all the time. Shout out to my homie Destroyer MG and his old Diablo and Warcraft guild, the War Pigs. Made a lot of enemies. Some friends, lots of enemies. My guild was uh, no fat chicks. Uh, make sure you join. Yeah, here's some of that like early 90s kind of stuff. <clears throat> One more so of this. I want it to be like more mid, more early 90s. This stuff looks a little too contemporary. Show me the really old stuff, man. Come on. Maybe this here. Well, I guess it wasn't early 90s. So that game came out about, what, 1996 or so? 97? Uh, I'm, I'm a little... I'm a little chagrined that this is like very modern, but it still looks pretty good. Is this Braum maybe? Hey, it is. Damn, I'm good. Okay, we'll, we'll close this up right away to, in the interest of time, but sure, 10 bucks. I mean, it'll work out. <clears throat> uh, next up, a dollar bin concrete full color special number one marvel comics presents weapon x that's marvel comic presents number 82 putting this barry windsor smith uh, set together black magic number one. Oh yeah some kirby stuff here the strangest stories ever told a new simon kirby special huh <clears throat> Okay, another vendor had, like, just kind of miscellaneous uh, music memorabilia. Here's an autobiography on John Lydon. I imagine there's interesting little uh, nuggets or anecdotes and opinions and stuff in here, so might be good to re read. He had pins for a dollar. This will go to a friend. It's pretty hot, don't you think? Very erotic. I think my friend will get a my buddy Pat will get a kick out of this. Pat Foster, Pat Dunst. And here's uh, David Lee Roth. Pin <laughs> for a buck, too. Next vendor. Uh, bargain bin. Legends of Dark Claw. Larry Hama. Jim Ballant. Amalgam. Another copy of Mare Comics Special Number 1, Sentinels of Justice. I think I talked about this on the previous video. It's been talked about elsewhere, too. Marvel X-Men collection, Jim Lee. These are like the uh, pin-up art kind of card things that Jim Lee did. Wanna take a look inside? Take a quick little look, yeah? Give it a little basic squiz. It looks kind of weird blown up in this size though. It probably looks better just in the card size, honestly. Love the way he draws babes for these though. So Shadow Cat. He was really on fire, man. Oh yeah, this domino is hot. I love this one. This is really beat up. Maybe I should actually just, you know, for bargain bin price, you could like actually cut some pinups out. You put some something up. What's this chick's name? Saturnine. 
<clears throat> yeah. Um, some com missing commandy issues. Commandy number nine. Some uh, Kirby 70s sci fi. Number 20. Get nearly complete Kirby run there. Rock and Roll Comics, Van Halen. <laughs> this is always like, keep it or give it to a friend or something. These are always fun to read though. When it's like a band you're, you like uh, at least somewhat. Twilight Zone number one from Now Comics. I saw that Bruce Jones was the writer, so I was like, yeah, give that a whirl. And even though it was priced at 15, this is from the bargain bin. Next vendor. Hit up another dollar bin and I saw that uh, they had this Transmetropolitan in the first, I guess you could call it a trade paperback. I think it collects the first three issues for a dollar, so that's a good sign. And then uh, this Frank Miller Robocop promo comic uh, in the same dollar bin. I was like, yeah, this should be good. Even though there was like, what, only two um, bargain bins, it was like off to a good start. Um, some Anne Decenti and John Romita Jr. Daredevil. I was kind of just looking for the ones where he's in hell. I'm not sure what numbers those are, but that was number 249, 263. 264, 265, 279, <clears throat> 280, 281. This uh, Wizard exclusive Genesis Edition Dawn. So this looks to be sketchbook, kind of, Dawn, which is kind of cool. Why not look in here? You don't get to see this kind of thing very often, do you? His, his art was like more dynamic back then. I don't want to hate, but um, I think he could take it to the next level if he was like more dynamic, less uh, like less of them being on a 2D plane. If there was like more perspective and stuff like that or something, then he could really be uh, taking it to uh, the next level with this stuff. Um, okay. Steve, I saw this like max uh explicit content how are the ducks so i was like yeah okay why well, tr i'll try it out because uh he he was like making this less than a lot dollar each to get a bunch so how are the duck number one from max comics explicit how are the duck number two is it a glenn fabry cover it really looks like maybe it is um interior by phil winslade though what else did he do did he do like goddess or something I want to say with Godliness. Uh, maybe. Um, Incredible Hulk. I saw this written by Bruce Jones with John Romita Jr. and inks by Tom Palmer. So I was like, yeah, I'll dip my toes in. I'll, I'll give some some of these a shot and see what they're like. Um, that's number 35, 36, 37, 38. 39 and 40. And you also had these in, in that dollar bin too. Richard Corbin Banner. So um, this is one to four. I was missing number one, but um, I'll have doubles of uh, two, three, and four here. Can sell or give those to friends. <clears throat> Trade or something. Yeah, Richard Corbin. Garth Ennis, Marvel Knights. Uh, the the Punisher and Painkiller Jane. So Garth Ennis, Joe Jusco, uh, Ross, and Rubenstein. I remember reading this when it came out, but be revisiting it. Marvel Knights, Chuck Dixon. This was just a cool cover, so I was like, um, out of all the Marvel Knights, maybe I'll just check this issue out randomly to see if it's worth uh, checking out the others. Brian Azzarello and Richard Corbin Cage. Number one, some Richard Corbin, Luke Cage, so. Number two, number three, I think I'm missing one. Yeah, I'm missing number four. Uh, number five, maybe there, unless there's like, I don't know what that shoe is, let's go up to maybe six. Usually it's even, right? Um, I was like, yeah, I'll try out some later Uncanny X-Men because this cover looks cool. Sean Phillips, Uncanny X-Men number 408. And I saw there was a bunch of like, 
more recent Chris Claremont. Um, would this be Alan Davis? Anyways, it's Claremont Davis, uh, Davis and Farmer. I guess maybe it's like Mark Farmer inking. Without opening, uh, we'll just keep this moving a little bit. Uh, that was number 445. We'll showcase more stuff, but um, when I'm like more sure that it's like worth checking out, not just randomly. 446, 447, 448, 454. Still Claremont, but different artists though. 456, 457. <clears throat> A more recent New Mutants with Chris Claremont writing and Bill Sankovich doing the art. It's kind of interesting. Let's see what year this is. 2019? Claire Martin's Shinkevich together again. <clears throat> oh yeah, and uh, he gave me a deal on those dollar comics, and then I was like, how about this? And he said, how about, yeah, okay, five bucks for that. and. I've kind of wanted this for a while because it's a cool like poster uh, cover for Transformers. Like it would be good to maybe just put up on a wall or something. I think these do come out as posters, or maybe it was printed again as a poster. But let's take it out of the plastic just so it can see how good it really looks. Iconic cover. Okay, next vendor. Uh, more dollar bin stuff from another dude. Scout miniseries, New America, number one of four. Is this Tom Yeats, the cover? Uh, unfortunately, it's not him on the interior, though. New Gods, number two. These reprint the Kirby stuff, I believe. So a good way to read that, maybe, um, in this format, rather than trade. Because, I, you know, I always like, like newsprint better than... This might not be newsprint, though, but I think it's, like, less glossy than the trades. Uh, number two, number three, and number four. Okay, now, coming up to this big old long box of stuff. Um, String Bean Comics, they had a bunch of long boxes set up. I don't know, maybe like 20 or something. Uh, that was all $2, but we made a deal. Because <laughs> I was like, I was making a big stack, and I was like, how about, will you go like even less and less, so... Uh, about a dollar twenty-five each I made for these, and they're all stuff that I'm like pretty stoked to read. So let's go to it. There was a lot of Avatar and Boundless stuff in there, um, so I've kind of been on a kick for that stuff. So there's a lot in here. Uh, this will be the last vendor read up. So if you don't like uh, sex and violence, you can click off the video now because there's a lot of that coming up. Um, Absolution number one. Final Justice cover. Belladonna, number one, regular cover. Um, these were like, all the ones I've read of these so far were like kind of dumb, but we'll see. <laughs> uh, Belladonna, number two, regular cover. Belladonna, number three, regular cover. We'll stop once in a while though. Charles Vest, Book of Night. Uh, Charles Vest is always good. I have this already, but, you know, let's get an extra copy for $1.25. Garth Ennis, Caliban. I haven't read this, but... Okay, so this is the Terror cover variant. haven't read this, but I hear it's kind of like Garth Ennis doing space horror. Um, a lot of vibes similar to maybe Alien or Aliens, is what people say. But uh, I think I've read different people say that it's good or like mediocre so we'll see i love garth ennis but i do hate when he's mediocre because it always feels like damn <laughs> you could add greatness but you know um nothing against him he's very prolific so who could who could be godly all the time right you have to be human sometimes uh that's number one number two regular cover number three terror cover Number four, 
Terra cover. Number six, Terra cover. Number seven, Terra. Caligula, number one, David Lappin and German Nobile, or German Nobile, or I don't know how you would say his name, the regular cover. I'll be revisiting this, because um, I wasn't like super keen on it before. It is like extremely um, de depraved, demented. <laughs> uh, okay. Cinema Pur Purgatorio, number two. I already have number one, so. The modded cover. Number three, the more perfect union. Number four, modded cover. Number five, the vast cover. Let me make sure my phone is like focusing good here. Because we're going to be looking at these covers well. Number six, modded cover. Number seven, A More Perfect Union. Code Prue. So this looks to be some kind of maybe techno horror romance by Garth Ennis and Rallo Cesares. I'm becoming quite a fan of Rallo Cesares' um, art. This is a rap cover, right? Get a quick look inside. Okay, some of that writing, or that art, I mean, a little bit. Looks pretty good in the black and white. No idea what this, what this comic is, but, um, you know, two names that are usually good. Continuing. Code Peru number two. Another wrap cover. Let's take a quick look here. Take a good look. Yeah, looks interesting. Alan Moore's The Courtyard. I think this is, um, he was doing a lot of Lovecraftian stuff for Avatar, right? This looks to be about the same. Uh, this is like a prestige format, almost like a trade paperback, but prestige format, so I'm guessing it's somewhere like 48 to 60 pages or something. Criminal, The Last of the Innocent by Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips. I'll try, I want to try out some of Ed, Ed Brubaker, because, uh, I know he's supposed to be renowned as, like, a good crime writer, and I just need more crime comics. Or crime in, in general in my life. Probably gonna read more like um, crime noir novels as well. Um, so that was number one, two, three, and number four. Crossed, number zero. Yeah, this is what did it for me. I saw that there was like a hundred issues of Crossed in there, almost, and I was like, damn. Um, that's something that I actually like, uh, I've kind of run out of Crossed to read. <clears throat> I haven't read like nearly um even maybe twenty five percent of all of them or anything. Uh but I've always I've just been thinking lately like I could man, I could like totally read a little cross mini series or story before bed, like just about every day probably. And when I saw these I was like, damn, I'm gonna have to get like a whole long box off of this vendor bed. Uh so I was like, we gotta we gotta work out some kind of deal, so yeah, worked out okay, and now I'm just gonna have like something to read like reliably, um, and j it's, it'll be easy enough to like keep the ones that we like and flip, trade, sell the others. Cross number zero by Garth Ennis and Jason Burroughs. I didn't even know there was a number zero. I never seen it before. Psychopath number two by David Lapham and Rallo Cazares. I have this series in full already, but. It'll be good. It's good enough that I could recommend this to other people, so I can, like, sell it, vouch for it. Uh, Cross Psychopath, number three, the wrapped cover. I'll take a quick look at these, right? Click off now if you can't uh, deal with seeing this stuff. Or if you just listen, that's cool, too. I listen to a lot of YouTube. 
Uh, issue number four. Number five, wrapped variant. Number six, torture variant. Hideous stuff, some of it. Even for me. Number seven, wrapped cover. Let's fix the focus here. Can we do that phone? Some kind of like a uh, rock band. Yeah, Relis is it is pretty pretty sick. If the focus will allow us to showcase his art. It's even kind of blurry, but you can still tell that it's pretty awesome. Issue two of Badlands, the torture variant. Number three of Badlands, here's uh, Garth Ennis revisiting. Number four, some Jamie Delano, regular cover. Issue five, rap cover. This story was like pretty good to read. It was decent. Kind of turns out that they're all like <laughs> the the survivors that like end up meeting up with each other are like kind of psycho and sociopaths. So I don't want to spoil it. Uh, issue number six, rap. It's a pretty funny cover. It's wrap around cover of all these Hare Krishnas in the airport. Number seven, torture variant. Number eight, wrap. Some more of that Rallo. Number nine, wrap. This is some like blasphemy to the Hindu pantheon, I believe. Issue number 10, some uh, David Lapham, and damn, this one, this story arc is good too. I really like this one. Number 11, wrap. I wonder what's happening in my subconscious by like constantly reading these, man. Uh, number 12, I think I actually had a dream where I like had to fight all these guys and stuff, but it wasn't even, it wasn't like a, a horror dream. It was just kind of like a drama. Okay, <laughs> issue number 13, the final issue that I was missing from the lap. Um, this is very disturbing cover, man. Don't even look at this. Uh, um, issue number 14, torture variant, new story arc. Number 15. Number 16. Wrapped. Number 21. 21. Number 22. More David Lapham. Cool. <laughs> it's cool to have like this world and some of these writers and artists that I that I like and knowing that there's like some new stuff. Well, it's not new. It's from, I don't know, 2015 or something, but new to me. I haven't read it yet. Um, number 23, Torture Variant. Number 24. Number 35, A Wrap. Number 36, Torture. Torture? Number 37, Torture. Number 38, Wrap. Number 39, Wrap. Rep, rep, rep. Route 66. Get your kicks. Number 40. 
number 41. Some Japanese stuff here, I guess, going on. Number 42. Is this one of the artists that was on Frost 100? It looks kind of familiar. Number 43, Torture. Torture? Number 44, Rap. I'm kind of sicko reads this stuff, man. You don't get off on it or anything, or like, I used to look at this kind of thing and be like, what kind of fucking idiot, loser, brain dead, fucking jerk off <laughs> like you read this? But uh, a lot of the time, the simplicity of the cover uh, belies. No, it doesn't belie it. Like, uh, <laughs> it doesn't really show off how intricate and sophisticated the writing actually can be. Like, it looks like just trash, like, uh, kind of stuff that'll rot your brain. Yeah, kind of. Feels good the way the brain rots, so. You know when your brain cells are done from, like, drinking or having fun? Maybe it's that kind of thing. 46, rap. Not every storyline hits, so it depends on the writer... An artist. More so for me, the writer. Um, number 47, rap. But yeah, a lot of stuff I haven't read, so... I think I'll go through these pretty fast. Um, number 48, regular cover. Oh, these are the, like the two... Like the Guinness World Record classic dudes, maybe? <laughs> um, number 49, normal. Regular. Oops. Number 50, Amazon's variant. Let's fix the focus. Come on, baby. Somewhat. So I think the storyline, Garth Ennis returning, is like kind of a prequel or like the government and military high ups like reacting when it first starts. Issue 52. So, should be interesting to read. I think this is supposed to be one of. The better story arcs too. Garth Ennis again, the series he created. Number 55, Rap. Number 56, Rap. Yeah, R.I.P. my uh, unconscious mind. Number 57. Uh, number 57, Rap. Number 58, Regular. Number 59, Justin Jordan. Okay. Yeah, this will also be a way for me to be exposed to writers I'm not familiar with. Number 60, Rap. Number 61, Fatal Fantasy variant. Number 62, Fatal Fantasy variant. It's kind of cool. It almost looks like the artist from uh, Mercury Heat. I wouldn't be surprised if it was, but I'm not sure. Uh, number 63, regular cover. Uh, again, got two of these by accident, but not too many doubles in there. Number 64, wrap. David Lapham again, cool. Number 65, wrap. Covers are like pretty standard, I guess, at this point. Uh, 66, 67 wrap. David Lapa, man, cool. And I guess this is like a military, fighting a military group too. Shouldn't be, uh, should be a little more on the serious side, maybe. Not too, like, off the wall. Number 
69 regular so 68 that we just showed number 70 regular cover number 71 regular cover new storyline number 73 74 <laughs> kind of good cross badlands number 75 femme fatale variant some Kieran Gillen storyline here. Um, number 76, Megafauna Mayhem. A wraparound variant. I don't think these were done in ratios, by the way. These, like, different variants. I think you just ordered whichever one you preferred. But still cool. That's a lot of, like, underrated talent. Um, issue number 78, regular. Or, sorry, 70... Yeah, that's 78. Number 77. Wrap cover. Number 79. Number 80. Number 81. This wasn't a bad story, this Mike Wolfer. I've read this one before. Number 82. 83, 84, C-Day Worldwide cover, number 87, wrap cover, Wall Street, number 88, Number 89, it's just the light. Maybe we can get better lighting here. Number 98. Wait, I thought that was 90. Let's put these in better order here. Number 95. This must be Rallo Cesaro's again, maybe? Not sure though. It looks like maybe. A wrap cover. Number 97 wrap. Number 98. 99. Crossed 100. This is one of the best of uh, all of them, it seems. Uh, of that I've read so far. Alan Moore, Galbiol, and Dryde. This is regular cover, number one. American History X cover, number two. A wrap, wraparound cover. Definitely something sad about this. <laughs> That's a really beautiful background, though. Ruin Prawn. Number four. Future Tense variant. Number five, Cross Culture variant. Number six, Future Tense. I recognize this. This is um, Foundation and Empire by... Is it Asimov? A take on that cover, I believe. Is it Asimov? I forget. Foundation. Um, number seven, American History X, wraparound variant. Crossed 100, number eight, Wishful Fiction cover. Number nine, the American History X wraparound. Number 10, American History, Wraparound. Number 11, Wishful Fiction, variant. Number 12, Wishful Fiction, variant. Number 13, Regular. Number 14, Wishful Fiction. This is pretty funny. 
some kind of like H.G. Wells-ish character. <laughs> uh, number 15, regular cover. These issues are good, man. Cross 100 is good. Number 16, an American History X wraparound variant. And number 18, Wishful Fiction. Okay, that does it for the cross, but that's a lot. <laughs> Almost 100 issues there. Well, I'm sure it's missing, but maybe it's more like 75 or something, actually, but... Uh, more stuff from Boundless, the adults-only branch of Avatar Press, as I understand. Ember, number zero, the regular cover. Number zero, the sultry variant. Empire of the Dead, Act Two. Parental advisory, not for kids. George A. Romero. Let's see. That's about... I guess it's like a Romero property, but looks to be vampire stuff. I'll give it a I'll, I'll give it a whirl. The Eternals number two, some Kirby for bargain price. Max Brooks, the Extinction Parade, uh, regular cover number two. Extinction Parade number three, End of a Species cover. Grendel. In Devil by the Deed, featuring Michael R. Allred, Guy Davis, Kelly Jones, Ted Christensen, Jason Pearson, Tim Sale, and John K. Snyder. We'll give that a whirl. Savage Hawkman. Hawkman. My bad. <laughs> Number one of the new 52 by Tony S. Daniel and Philip Tan. I'll give that a shot, sure. Been liking Hawkworld. A Hellboy. Number one of The Fury. Gotta read some. Gotta find some good Hellboy. Uh, Logan, Shadow Society. This is a prestige format, so the cover looked cool. Anyway, need to find some good Wolverine still. Marvel masterpieces number two. So these are, I guess these are like kind of painting pinups by some of the artists at Marvel back in the day. George Esco Silver Surfer there. Let's give this a quick, quick look. Harrison, Dark, or Phoenix. This must be Brereton, Deathlock. Sinkovich, Wolverine. What? Kind of nice Beta Ray Bill. Who would this be? Maybe Texera or something even? No, Phillips, it says. This art looks familiar. It's Bloodhawk. I want to say maybe it's like Ridgeway or something even, I'm not sure. She-Hulk, this must be Jessica. <laughs> um, or maybe not, I don't know. Just guessing, it's kind of fun to guess. It's kind of a nice rhino. Oh, Michael William Kaluta Storm. Foreman, Tristan, Spider Woman. Oh yeah, this Glenn Fabry Doctor Doom is pretty nice. Nineteen ninety three. That Ghost Rider twenty ninety nine is kind of cool. Or Vengeance, Brereton Cable. Brett Blevins, Typhoid Mary. Yeah, kind of neat. More Marvel masterpieces. I forgot that I even got more than one of those. Let's check it out again, eh? Yay! Oh, oh it says who has stuff in here this time. I kind of don't want to look. It's kind of fun to keep guessing. It's Taranko, Dark Phoenix. Interesting. Ted McKeever Cable. Lilith by Kent Williams. Huh. Michael Kaluta, Doctor Strange. That should be a match made in, uh, you know, somewhere. Somewhere good. This must be Sankovich, Vulture, yeah. Joe Chiodo, Bla uh, Black Widow. Kind of nice. 
thing. Motherfucker, it looks like the fucking thing. Puma, Thanos. Hey, that's nice Colossus. Julie Bell. Nice. It looks better in person. My phone is like limited here. Let's try to zoom in and get like more detail. That looks pretty sick, dude. Is Julie Bell... She was married to... Um, what's the dude's name? Boris Vallejo? And like Saddam Hussein was collecting their paintings a lot. Based... I don't know, <laughs> like that funny little uh, tidbit. Steranko Lilith? Who Who is this again doing this? No, that's not Steranko, is it? Oh, I forgot what it said. Another Julie Bell on Iron Man again. Damn, that looks sick as hell, dude. She is good. Let's try to get more light on here. That woman has skills to pay the bills, dude. Ted McKeever cable. That's pretty nice, kind of like... Almost minimalistic or something, but not not like that. But is what are this watercolors or pastels or something even? Yeah, okay, those kind of look. That looks like pastel kind of marks. Continuing. Hey, <laughs> finally found the pile of Nancy in hell, dude. <laughs> Uh, this is like all of them. <laughs> Nancy and Hell number one. Juan Jose Rip. This is a wraparound cover also. I, yeah, you know, initially I was like, this looks dumb. Some chick she has carry chainsaw. But the thing is, when you're in Hell, you're, you're kind of anchored to something from the real world that is, has connections to you for some reason. So she like can't be separated from the chainsaw. She has to carry it with her all the time. There's always something like that when you're in hell, apparently. But it, like, you know, just cuts through shit real easy. It's like a sword vorpal. Like a vorpal sword. Nasty in hell number two. Number three. Number four. As I understand, the Juan Jose Rip is the first series. Nasty in hell with Savage Dragon. Special. This is with uh, Enrique Lopez Lorenzana. I don't see a little like mark over the end, so I don't think it would be Lorenzana, right? Just Lorenzana. Um, Nancy and Hell on Earth, number one. Let's look through this art. This guy's sick, dude. So much going on in each issue. Yeah, looking forward to these. Just some like gratuitous, like fun to rot my mind. Feels so good letting my mind rot, man. Number two, Hell on Earth. Number three, this is the first one. This is like how I discovered this series. I was like, may as well get the three too. Sell it or give it away. Um, number four. That isn't like, I think there's another Nancy and Hell series, but that's at least two complete there. So I think it's volume one and two. Paul Pope, 100%, number four out of five. So from Bargain Bins, I always, there's always like one issue, <laughs> and it's always like one of the ones I'm missing, but just random vendors will have like one issue of this. And uh, now I have, I think, number two, three, and four. So I'm looking for number one and number five. Space Punisher, uh, the what? By Frank Terry and Mark Texera. What? But it's Mark Texera though, so 
it looks to me that there's like just kind of like an alternate world where he's Punisher, but it all takes place in like a sci-fi kind of space setting. Get some text painted interiors. I'll give it a shot. Unfortunately, they didn't have the full series in there, but uh, number one and number two out of four. That was number one, here's number two. Radical. Free comic book day. No idea what this is, but I think it just shows off different, um, you know, nice cover. Different kind of horror fantasy stuff from this publisher. Revolutionary War Dark Angel. As far as I could tell, this looks like they're kind of like reimaginings of uh, Marvel UK properties. And maybe standalone, but in an overarching storyline. So I just like kind of got... Two, one based on like I was like yeah I'll keep trying out Karen Gill and stuff see if I like him or hate him or something <laughs> usually he seems pretty decent and uh, also this I was like I'll try one that's not him Death's Head 2 because those Death's Head characters always looked kind of cool to me when I was a kid I was like what is that stuff over there in Marvel UK Rough Raiders annual number one by Stephen Hughes from early Stephen Hughes 1990 check it out a little bit. R.I.P. Creator, artistically anyway, of like, Evil Ernie, Lady Death. Uh, Rough Raiders, I don't see a number on this, by Tim Vigil, is it Kevin Dunn or Ben Dunn or something, and Steve Hughes? Rough Raiders Yearbook by Vigil, Dudden, and Hughes, 1994. So, getting a little on in time, so see how it evolved a little bit. I'm not sure if this will be fun to read or not, honestly. Even though I like all those guys. It, like, it looks a little dense, maybe. And, like, the, the layouts are very, like, basic, too. Like, it doesn't look, like, super dynamic or anything. But you never know. Sometimes, once you get into it, each panel, like, sucks you into the world of that panel and you get immersed, so... It's kind of hard to judge by, like, being zoomed out, as it were. Um, Sparta, USA number one. If I see that it's David Lapham, I'll just give it a shot. Number two. Number three, number four, number five, another copy of Transformers number five, this one more beat up. But you know, it might be like a good enough gift to somebody. It's a really cool cover, man. Looks even better in real life, not sure, like, if I had like a super high res camera or a scan. Uh, more Transformers. Try it out. I do like this style of art a lot. Like, I heard people say that it was falling off, though. That the series was, like, really in shambles before this new guy, like, is saving it, is what people are saying. But this art looks rad, dude. That's number nine. Transformers Spotlight Prowl. Cover A. More Boundless comics, War Goddess, number zero, it's a wraparound cover, not familiar with this uh, title, but I'll just like, it seems like it's so hard to get Boundless here that I'll just like grab a bunch or not and see what's uh, good or not, see what's worth trying to complete and not, and if it is like rare then, you know, I, I'll have it, other people won't, hey, the cat, <laughs> say hi to the cat guys. Oh, you should have seen her face when she's like squinting, looking at the camera. I think she'll just get out of the way in a second. <laughs> she's just a little antsy. Spring is, uh, you know, sprung, so. <laughs> she's a lot cuter in person, guys. You know, not that photogenic, though. <laughs> get the, the grumpy-ass face when it's on camera. Momo. 
continuing. Um, War Goddess number three, regular cover. Number four, Mike Wolfer seems to be not be too bad, so... Duh, what a disgusting... <laughs> so fucking awful, man. Um, number five, rap cover. Fighting some kind of harpies by the looks of it. The Woman of Thessaly. War Goddess, number six, regular cover. Number seven, Gore Edition cover. Number eight, regular. Number nine, Sultry. <laughs> number ten, Sultry. Yeah. Weird Western Tales presents Jonah Hex, number 31. Draw a hex! We paid for a killing and we aim to get one! I'll, I've been enjoying reading Jonah Hex, so... Uh, when it comes to Weird Western Tales, I'll, like, check those out, because early Joan Hex is, uh, seems on point. This is getting to be, like, I think it started around, was it issue, like, 11 or 13 or something, the first appearance, so... This is getting, like, a little bit on, maybe into, getting towards, like, second or third year of them. So we'll see if it still is good. Wolverine Saga, book four, Michael William Kaluta cover. So I'll see what this is all about. It's prestige format, thicker. Need to see some good Wolverine, damn it. Uh, Wolverine number 305, I see this written by Colin Bunn, I imagine. Uh, I don't know how many other Bunns are writing uh, comics, so we'll see. Number 306, more Colin Bunn. 307, let's see good about getting a little run, giving that a shot. Number 308, number 313. Jeff Loeb, who, like, uh, sometimes is, like, whatever to me. Um, but Sim Simone Bianchi is, like, pretty nice painted art, too, so I'm on board. Um, I'll give it a shot. Dark Wolverine, number 88, Frankencastle. Horrible. <laughs> Absolutely charismaless character, but it's, uh, Frankencastle. Good art. Uh, so... I'll, I'm just putting the Frankencastle stuff together. It's like, it can be pretty fun. Especially when it's 20 more. But this is like other dudes. Uh, Frankencastle. So, Wolverine, Dark Wolverine number 89. Hey. Yeah, dude. This vendor had like so much stuff that I was looking for. A ton of Uncanny X-Force. Finally. Getting so close to complete of these. So, I'll like read it all in full and then see about um, keeping it or deciding like... Because, like, I read the, like, five issues or so I read, like, I was like, yeah, this rules, but, you know, we'll see what the overall picture is like. Uncanny X-Force number two, number three, number ten. There's some nice art in these, too. Number eleven, number thirteen, number fourteen, number fifteen. Number 16, number 17, it's kind of a cool cover. Is that like old school Psylocke uniform? Archangel. I like the way the wings look too. It's like subtly coming out of the dark. Number 19, number 19.1, number 20, number 22. No cat. Number 23. The cat is like really <laughs> insistent. Really wants something. Oh, you know what? It's feeding time. Um, but she can wait just like where this is the last little stack. Be just a couple more minutes. 23. We all need to lean patience. Don't worry, I treat this cat better than <laughs> myself. 24. Um, 28. 29, 30, 31, 32, final execution, 34, yeah, that's pretty nice uh, versus Sabretooth cover, um, and Uncanny X-Force Volume 2, number 1, 
new creative team. We'll see. Some more Marvel X-Men Jim Lee. Let's take a quick look, shall we? But the cat's starving! This is Megan. Blob. I love the way he draws boobs. Jean Grey. Oh yeah, Psylocke. Jim Lee Psylocke. Yes! And like, those huge thighs. So good. Uh, what are you doing watching my videos? <laughs> you agree? Do you, don't you agree with these takes, though? Um, Rogue, looking cute as hell. Yeah, sugar. Don't worry, you're coming to the end of all this magic. Nice uh, composition on this Ghibli. It's kind of like he, he probably threw this together, but it's good that this kind of captures, like... Ah! <laughs> Jubilee like shooting stuff at you. Good good work. Mystique. This looks good as hell too. Juggy. Her death bird. And Magneto. Cerebro. Magneto. Getting to the end. Only a couple more. Oh yeah, I think that's it. Um, I saw this like a one out of two Claremont set, so yeah, I'll give it a shot. Um, so yeah, that was the haul. C4 Comic Con, huge. Nice to see tons of people. Big turnout, even though it was far away. Uh, tons of blurs. We're in the N-word costumes. Ninjas, that is. Get your mind out of the gutter. Um, yeah, it's cool shit, man. Uh, tons of stuff. <laughs> this will, like, set me for a while. Uh, quick shout-out to... Commenter. He said... Check this out, dude. I think it was, like, Sean Harrison, maybe? Is that your name? Sorry, offhand, I don't remember. My YouTube app is a little messy, too. But he, in a previous video, his comment, he said, actually, Commandy number two had an ad for The Shadow, but it was, like, before it was drawn, and it was by Bernie Wrightson, because originally it was supposed to be Bernie Wrightson doing The Shadow, rather than my, uh, Michael William Kaluta. So he said this is actually the only place that you can, like, see this, or that this art was, like, publicized, of Bernie Wrightson doing The Shadow. So that's cool as shit, man. Thanks for that shout-out. <clears throat> the knowledge base of you guys, like, rolls, man, I love it. Like, I'll get... <laughs> get something. Uh, thanks for watching, guys, and... Happy hunting for yourself out there. Hope you find what you're looking for and stuff that you didn't even know you were looking for. Uh, like and subscribe and all of that stuff. And uh, feel free to comment. Talk to me or each other in the comments because uh, it's fun hearing from you guys. Okay, I'll see you then. Peace.